Hello, and this is the help video to help you do the arithmetic sequences online exercise. And let's not waste any time, get straight into level one, where we have a number sequence. And the reason this is called an arithmetic sequence or a linear sequence is because we're constantly adding the same number on each time to get to the next term. And can you see that each term is three more than the previous term? So to find the next term, we just add another three onto the 20, and that makes 23. Okay, this example starts off with nine, and then goes on to 17. So to find the common difference, you could subtract 9 from 17, and that would give you 8. And then you can quite clearly see that it is 8 that is added on each time to get the next term in the sequence. So if you add 8 onto 49, you will get the answer 57. And the last example for level 1 is this sequence that starts at 20 and then it goes down to 11. It reduces. So rather than adding on, we're actually subtracting something. And can you see that the difference between 20 and 11, if you subtract 11 from 20, you'll get 9. So we say the common difference is negative 9. We're taking away 9 each time. So if you subtract 9 from negative 16, that will give you the next term in the sequence, which is negative 25. So have a go at the online exercise, click the check button often to make sure that you're doing the questions correctly, and then come back here for level two. Level two asks you to find a formula for the nth term of the sequence. So here we have a sequence, the first term is 4, the second term is 7, and you can quite easily see that the common difference is 3. We keep adding 3 on to each term to get the next term, which is a bit like the 3 times table. And the formula for the 3 times table is 3n, where n could be 1, 2, 3, it's all the numbers of the terms of the sequence. But it's not quite the three times table. So if I write down the three times table, you can see that our sequence that's been given to us is always one more than the three times table. So I can add one onto the three n to get the formula I need. So this is the formula that will enable you to work out any term of the sequence. And n is the numbers, the counting numbers, one, two, three, four, five, as we go through the terms of the sequence. Okay, the second example here, we have a six as the first term, and that then carries on with a 15. So you can see that the common difference is nine. We keep adding nine on each time to get to the next term, and the, the thing that that's similar to is the nine times table because in the nine times table you keep adding nine on, don't you? So I'll write down the nine times table underneath and I'll see how it differs from our sequence. Right, I can see that we need to subtract three each time from the nine times table to get the given sequence. So the whole formula is 9n minus three. You getting the hang of this yet? Okay, let's look at the tricky one then. This sequence has negative numbers and it seems to be decreasing. So this time the common difference is negative 10. Hmm, I don't suppose you're familiar with the negative 10 times table, but it's not too difficult. So I'll write it down, minus 10, minus 20, minus 30 underneath our original sequence and then see what do I have to do to adjust it to get to our given sequence. So minus 10n is the formula for the minus 10 times table and we need to subtract a further 2 so the formula in this case is minus 10n minus 2. So have a go at level 2 of the online exercise come back here for level 3. 
And level three, this question here is asking us to find the 100th term of this sequence. Well, you could actually go on and write it out until you get to the 100th term, but that would take a long time. There must be a quicker way. So the idea is to find the formula for this sequence, just as we did in level two. We can see that we're adding three on each time. The common difference is three, so it's a bit like the three times table. Write down the three times table and see what the difference is. And the difference is plus two. So the formula is 3n plus two. So remember, n stands for the number of the term in the sequence. So we need to work out 3 times 100 add 2 to find the 100th term. And that's 302. Much quicker than writing down all the terms, I'm sure you'll agree. OK, this one is to find the 50th term of the sequence. And we can see that we go on by adding 8 each time. So the formula is going to have an 8n in it for the 8 times table. If I write down the 8 times table, I can see I need to adjust it by adding 1 to each term. So the formula has to be 8n plus 1. So now if I put 50 in place of the letter n, I'll have 8 times 50 plus 1, which is 401. So that is the 50th term of the sequence, 401. And the last example at level 3 is this one that begins with 20 and then goes down to 11 and then down to 2. So you can see we're subtracting 9 each time. So it's a bit like the minus 9 times table. So I know what minus 9n is going to be part of the formula. But then when I write down the minus 9 times table, how do I adjust it each time? I have to add on 29. So the complete formula for this sequence is minus 9n plus 29. And then to find the 34th term, you substitute 34 into that formula in place of the letter n. So negative 9 times 34 plus 29. And the answer is negative 277. That's all for level three. Have a go at the online exercise. Click the check button often to see if you're getting the questions right. And then come back here for level four. So before we go into level four, I'd like to tell you the story of this great mathematician, Carl Frederick Gauss, when he was just a little boy in elementary school in the late 1700s. And his teacher was a little busy one day, so decided to give the class something to keep them all busy while he got on with his administration tasks. Anyway, he asked the class to add up all the numbers from 1 to 100. And he was very surprised when young Carl put his hand up straight away and said, I've finished. How could he have completed the task so quickly? Well, apparently, the story goes, what he decided to do was to write down the sequence backwards next to the original sequence. And then once he'd done that, he would then add up the pairs of values that were next to each other. So 1 plus 100, that's the first number, plus the last number is 101. And then the second term of the sequence, plus the last but one term of the sequence, also adds up to 101. And the same is true for every other term of the sequence. So by the time he'd finished, he had got 100 101s. So he started to write down that the sum of the numbers from 1 to 100 is, but then he realized that, of course, he'd used every number twice in his calculations as he'd written out the sequence a second time. So what he did is halved the calculation, and he worked out a half of 100 times 101, which is quite easy to do. If you work out 100 times 101, you will get 10,100, and you halve that, and you will get 5,100. And that, in fact, is the answer for all the numbers added up from 1 to 100. So, then he thought, well, if that works for the most basic of all number sequences, 
it should also work for any other number sequence. So he then went on to say that the sum of the terms of any arithmetic sequence is always half of the number of terms multiplied by the first term plus the last term, because that's the calculation he'd done that you can see above. And we write that down and use it even these days, and we write it formally like this, that the sum of n terms of a sequence, where n is the number of terms of the sequence, is equal to a half of n, and that's written down as n over 2, and that's multiplied by the first term, which we call u1, and the last term, which we call un. So that formula can help you find the sum of any arithmetic sequence. So now let's use that formula for finding the sum of 20 terms of this sequence here. So first of all, we better work out what the formula is for the nth term of the sequence. So go back and have a look at level 2 if you don't know how to do that. But I can see that the formula for this sequence is 3n plus 1. So the 20th term is 3 times 20 plus 1, or 61. Now I can use that Gauss formula. It's the number of terms divided by 2, and then in brackets, the first term plus the last term. So that's 20 over 2, lots of 4 plus 61. Work that out. 4 plus 61 is 65. 10 20 divided by 2 is 10, so 10 times 65 is 650. So the sum of the first 20 terms of that sequence is 650. Okay, another example. We've got to find the sum of 15 terms. So the same routine, we first find the formula for, that, for the nth term of that sequence. And then we substitute 15 into that formula to find the nth term when n is 15. That's 132. And then, remember, it's half the number of terms, lots of the first term plus the last term. So you could work that out or use a calculator. The answer is 1,035. And now the last example, we have to find the sum of the first 25 terms of this sequence. First of all, find the formula for the sequence. It's minus 10n minus 2. Then substitute 25 into that formula, and we find that the 25th term is negative 252. So now, the sum of n terms of that sequence is the first term, minus 12, plus the last term, negative 252, and that's multiplied by half the number of terms, 25 over 2. And the answer is minus 3,300. OK, enjoy doing level 4 of the online exercise. Don't forget to claim your virtual trophies when you've finished. And there are plenty more activities on the Transom website for you to have a go at. Good luck. You can find Transom Mathematics at www.transom.org, where you're welcome to use all of the activities absolutely free. Or jump in with both feet and become a Transom subscriber.